So let me start uh, with some motivation. In particular, one motivation comes from uh, the observation that uh, effective field theories admitting a UV completion compatible with quantum gravity are typically populated by several extended objects, uh, and uh, uh, in particular, we focus on strings. And such extended objects, and uh, so, so strings, uh, uh, appear uh, um, in effective field, uh, field theories coming from string compactifications uh, um, because, uh, I mean, they arise, they correspond to some, uh, some higher dimensional brain wrapping some internal cycle. On the other hand, from a purely EFT viewpoint, their existence uh, simply follow by invoking the completeness hypothesis whenever there exists some uh, corresponding two-form potential under which uh, these uh, strings are charged. So this viewpoint uh, was indeed, uh, oops, sorry, I should, uh, yes, was uh, um, adopted in a, in a series of uh, nice papers starting with this uh, Kim Shio Rafa one, which consider BPS strings uh, in uh, uh, supergravity, supergravity is defined in more than four dimensions. And in particular, they showed how certain BPS strings uh, um, admit uh, a, a description in terms of an infrared uh, superconformer fixed point. And then by exploiting this superconformer structure, they uh, argue that their quantum consistency in combination with a cap into the bulk sector leads some uh, very interesting constraint on this bulk sector. So the natural question is then, of course, uh, what can we say about strings in four dimensions? And uh, in this talk, I will address this question. In particular, I focus on BPS strings uh, in a minimally supersymmetric effective field theories defined in four dimensions. And as we will see, I will consider uh, strings which can be considered as fundamental uh, from the effective theory viewpoint uh, in the sense that they cannot be resolved into some smooth uh, solitonic object within a four dimensional effective field theory. Now, these BPS strings uh, admit uh, a description um, within uh, the, this uh, minimally supersymmetric setting by which uses the a green schwartz formulation and allows to incorporate them into a quite general uh, bulk effective supergravity and in particular uh, their, uh, their inclusion uh, is described by by a term of this form which depends on the tension which in turn is completely fixed by by supersymmetry basically in terms of the, or the quantized charges, which uh, determine their coupling to the bulk to form potentials. So this is a natural way of introducing these strings uh, as electrically charged objects, uh, but when can, uh, of course, uh, provide uh, a dual, a magnetically dual description by dualizing these two forms into corresponding axions. And then mm -hmm. these strings can be regarded uh, as axionic in the sense that uh, Around them, the axions uh, undergo an, uni an integral shift, uh, which is uh, uh, determined basically by their uh, charges. Now, a key observation is that uh, when you perform this duality, you automatically get uh, a, a, an effective field theory in terms of the axions, which uh, uh, is characterized by, I mean, which is invariant, classically invariant under the uh, under shift symmetry, axionic shift symmetries. And uh, as we know, I mean, uh, uh, global symmetries are forbidden in, in quantum gravity models. And then such continuous shift symmetries can be at best preserved at some perturbative level and broken. Oh, uh, sorry, is that a question? No, it was just a background noise. Okay. So these uh, uh, axonic shift symmetries uh, should be preserved, uh, uh, I mean, in the best situation, preserved at the perturbative, in some perturbative sense and broken by some perturbative correction. So one is naturally led to focus uh, on uh, some asymptotic regions uh, of the field space uh, of your effective field theory. Um, here I'm thinking of uh, the, the effective field theory, the structure of the effective field theory defined uh, at the UV cutoff scale at which uh, 
de, 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 de theory is super, supersymmetry is preserved, okay? Then supersymmetry can be spontaneously broken at lower energy scale. So I remind the, fits, the full fit space defined at the UV cutoff scale at which the, the, the theory is supersymmetric. And uh, uh, one can focus on this asymptotic region, which is around some infinite distant point, and which is characterized by some perturbative regime, with respect to which uh, the axionic shift symmetries are preserved at the perturbative level, where they're broken by exponentially suppressed uh, non perturbative correction, which are uh, typically associated with a given set uh, of instanton charges. And so you see already at this uh, very qualitative uh, level that uh, such BPI strings uh, appear as natural probes, uh, uh, specific uh, probes for these uh, asymptotic field space regions and for the corresponding uh, perturbative physics. Okay. And now uh, I would like to emphasize that uh, strings in four dimensions are qualitatively and also quantitatively quite different from strings uh, in higher dimensions. Basically, uh, because they are co dimension two, and then they cannot be treated as probes uh, of a given, say, vacuum for the bulk theory. And the way they will generically destroy the asymptotic uh, vacuum structure. And they will uh, uh, typically uh, force the, the surrounding scalars to, to flow. And uh, in particular, they can flow away from this uh, uh, asymptotic weakly coupled region. And uh, uh, quite generically, they have uh, uh, infrared, uh, the infrared regime is out of control without specifying a, a specific, uh, I mean, the details uh, of uh, the infrared completion or the configuration. Luca, can I ask a quick yes, question? Sir. Yes, sure. So uh, one common solution to this kind of problems is to imagine rather than an infinitely long stream, you imagine a very large Precisely, precisely. This and is what I have in mind. Uh, I mean, the string itself cannot, you cannot just put a, a, an infinite stray string uh, in, a, in a vacuum. And, uh, and um, you have even the problem of understanding the meaning of what is a tension of the string. And, um, and so it's, it's, uh, you have to treat it in a different way for what you do in a, in a higher dimension. You need to specify the infrared completion, the sense uh, that you, you, for instance, proposed. You can uh, close it in a loop, and then there is uh, an infrared distance set by, uh, by the length of the loop. Or you could complete it uh, by introducing other strings in such a way that, uh, I mean, uh, mutually non local strings, if you have some uh, monogamy, some dualities in such a way that you get something consistent. But generically, you cannot just put a straight string in a vacuum. Okay. So, um, and, uh, and some of these uh, infrared, be, I mean, possible infrared behaviors has been, uh, for instance, uh, uh, discussed in this paper. On the other hand, uh, as far as we are interested in the structure of the effective field theory at the UV cutoff scale, which is also quite natural in this minimally supersymmetric case, then this is not really a problem since, uh, uh, I mean, this, the back reaction of the string can be interpreted as an energy flow uh, of the, uh, governing the coupling uh, between the string sector and the bulk sector along the lines of the general, uh, some general, more general discussion presented in these papers. And then it is actually sufficient for our purposes. Uh, I mean, if you treat the strings as uh, objects, which dynamical objects, which can contribute to the dynamics and appear in the, this effective field theory defined at this cutoff scale lambda, let's say, it's sufficient that the, the surrounding bulk theory is in this weakly coupled region in a small enough region around the string, okay? Say of uh, a length scale set by the typical cutoff scale. The typical, no, the cutoff scale that you choose for, it, for describing your effective field theory. And then one is naturally led to, to, to focus on those e strings whose back reaction, as you approach the string, automatically drives uh, the surrounding uh, scalars deep inside this asymptotic region. So such strings uh, are uh, strings which automatically somehow allow for the weakly coupled control incorporation within effective field theory. 
And then uh, for this reason, we, we, we call it such strings EFT strings. Okay. So uh, this is a very qualitative way of defining these EFT strings, but one can be actually more quantitative than by, by using the supersymmetry of your theory, uh, which implies that the axioms are paired with corresponding axioms into current multiplet, let's say. And, this and then these asymptotic regions uh, can be described in terms of uh, this axionic and axionic coordinate. The axionic ones are just angular coordinates that will use normalization in which the axioms have periodicity one. While the axioms, uh, uh, I mean, typically, um, uh, typically the axionic domain can be identified with some conical domain, uh, which uh, are, uh, I mean, in more mathematical terms, are, are points which are dual to the set of corresponding uh, instant on charges, uh, uh, which generate the, the break the, the axionic shift symmetries in these uh, asymptotic regions. And then one can identify then these asymptotic regions with these uh, uh, saxonic domains, which uh, I will refer to as axionic cone. And once you have a saxonic cone, basically the, 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 the possible uh, charges of uh, the EFT strings are obtained by uh, discretize, discretizing this axionic cone, okay? So I will de denote the, the set of possible EFT string charges with this uh, symbol. And uh, so these charges can be regarded as a discretization of this axionic cone or vice versa as uh, uh, the generators of this axionic cone, okay? And uh, actually, uh, each of these uh, charges, uh, I mean, uh, and then each EFT string is associated to the flow to infinite distance in field space, uh, which is described by a straight line uh, generated by the corresponding charge inside this saxonic cone. And then you see that already at this level, these EFT strings uh, provide a strong characterization of these asymptotic field space regions. And, uh, and uh, indeed, uh, uh, we explored this uh, aspect, uh, I mean, uh, in particular in connection with the swamp and distance conjecture and the, the weak gravity conjecture in these papers uh, and uh, related investigations uh, also appear uh, in these uh, papers here, also from complementary viewpoint. Uh, but Okay, in this talk, uh, I would like instead to, to discuss, uh, uh, I mean, this most recent paper with Nicolò and Timo, in which uh, we address the question of what uh, the quantum consistency of these EFT strings can tell us about uh, the, the, the bulk sector. And uh, as I try to explain, in this case, uh, we do not have control of, of uh, the, the, the infrared regime, uh, the, the physics, uh, the infrared physics. Uh, of these uh, strings. And so in particular, we cannot uh, assume uh, uh, the fact that they support uh, some, uh, the flow in the infrared to some super conformal field theory. But on the other hand, uh, I mean, uh, experience from, from uh, uh, the investigation of uh, explicit UV completions provided by string theory, let us to propose that in fact, uh, not only the bulk sector around the string is, uh, is weakly coupled, around this EFT string is weakly coupled, but also the wash sheet sector can be considered as weakly coupled, in particular can be described by weakly coupled or in a sigma model. Uh, Luca, can, can yes. good question. So yeah, sure. why do you say that you can assume an IRS CFT? I mean, it's, it's gonna be coupled to the bulk, but it could be interacting, right? I, I understand that in practice then it isn't, but I don't understand why it yeah, could as you said before, you need, for instance, to regularize the infrared, you need to put uh, the, the, the string on a circle, and then you are automatically breaking supersymmetry. It does not preserve globally supersymmetry. But, it, but if, I, if the circle is very, very large, you could imagine that you can still... Um, uh, you will have a, an infrared cut off anyway. You so, need anyway an infrared cut off. Even if I put the, the string, yeah. like infinite string, which is supersymmetric, I, I agree this destroys the synthetic vacuum. Even for that one, you say there's not, there couldn't have been an SCFT. But the problem is a matter of, okay, so if you, there will be in any case a maximal uh, infrared cutoff uh, after which uh, the, the, the bulk theory becomes be, uh, strongly coupled because, sorry, this is uh, the behavior of the back reaction as you approach the string. 
On the other hand, as you move away from the string, at some point you enter the strongly coupled region. So uh, in that case, uh, you simply don't know how to how to describe what you are probing. I mean, which region? It, it, and also in, in the deep IR, I see. So you're saying that there's not going to be a sector of physics which is at the core of the string and the cup. So you're saying that the modes are kind of fat and they mix with everybody. Yes. And this might not be true for P, for instance, for PQ7 brains that asymptote to a constant value of axiodilaton, but you're looking at the ones which are asymptotic. Uh, for yes. which this is true. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. And um, anyway, I mean, I think that uh, even in principle, uh, we can really get information on the on the UV structure of the theory, because uh, in the infrared, uh, I mean, you can have any effect, non perturbative correction, even not the modular space. So you don't know really what's going on uh, in the infrared or your, or your theory. So I think that it makes sense to focus on the on the field at the UV scale. And, uh, and, uh, and we are proposing that uh, at this UV scale, actually the, this specific this DFT string, they, they support a weakly coupled worksheet sector, which can be described by a nonlinear sigma model. This is our proposal, okay? And uh, if you, I mean, uh, assume this working assumption and, uh, and uh, in combination with the, with the completeness of this uh, EFT string spectrum, then uh, you can uh, you can uh, check the quantum consistency of this string as I'm going to show, and uh, you can get some non trivial quantum gravity constraints, which is what I'm, I will try to explain. Okay, okay. So uh, before entering some some more details, this uh, uh, this result, the description of this result. Let me just uh, very quickly comment on uh, the degree completion of such uh, EFT strings. Uh, so here there is a list. I'm not going to discuss. This list now, but I will come back to some examples in the following. Let me, I just wanted to emphasize a common feature of these uh, EFT strings, at least in the case in which we have a better control over their UV completion. Namely, they typically correspond to higher dimensional brains, which can freely move in the internal space and can explore the entire internal space. So, in this sense, uh, the really truly gravitational object, which can in principle capture information on the entire uh, UV completion. Uh, look at yes. Can I ask? Would an example because you you don't listed it here? What about the D seven rain wrapped on the whole Calabria? Would that be an example of an EFT string for you? Or yes. Well, that's a bit more tricky, but indeed uh, that would be that's already wrapping the entire internal space, so it doesn't need so, to, so be, to, to move. It. Okay. It's not, it doesn't need to, to, okay, to move around. And uh, that, that's uh, an example, although in that case uh, the their flow uh, implies uh, um, that the, 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 the coupling, the, the, the dilaton, is going to zero and to be coupling. On the other hand, it also implies that uh, the string scale metric shrinks to zero. So is one of the examples in which we don't have uh, full control over the, the internal space, uh, uh, which is uh, in the regime uh, towards which this is driven by the back reaction. So, okay, so let me go back to the agnostic viewpoint. Uh, so uh, without referring to any uh, specific UV completion and uh, uh, try to see what these uh, the, uh, the EFT strings can tell us about the bulk sector. In particular, we'll focus uh, on the on the gauge sector and on some uh, curvature um, square terms, and uh, uh, regarding the gauge sector, I will consider the gauge sector which is weakly coupled in the uh, asymptotic region that uh, I'm considering, and uh, uh, this implies that uh, uh, basically by supersymmetry they are coupling. One can uh, uh, I mean introduce the coupling to the saxonic. Uh, to the suction actions are appearing in this asymptotic region through some uh, constant CI. Uh, of course, these two terms are related by supersymmetry. And uh, the condition for this sector to be weakly coupled is automatic if we require that uh, this uh, combination here is positive for the suction moving within uh, the saxonic cone because the perturbative, the corresponding perturbative regime, uh, I mean, requires that uh, you are deep inside this axonic cone. Just to have a, a concrete example in mind, you can think of this axonic cone as the Keller cone, for instance, of the heterotic compactification in the regime, in the large volume uh, regime. 
okay? So I will assume this condition uh, between the pairing uh, of uh, this axiom with this uh, uh, gauge set. And uh, um, I will also consider the capping to the some curvature square terms, uh, uh, which have a similar structure. In particular, there is a Riemann square term here, which can be completed uh, into a full gauss bonnet uh, combination, uh, which can couple uh, through some other constants, uh, C tilde here, which of course by supersymmetry appear also uh, in these axionic cuttings to the Pontryagin eigen terms. Um, now, differently from, from these couplings here, uh, now a priori there is no, no reason to, uh, to expect from the pure EFT viewpoint a definite sign for these gauss bonnet terms. Okay? While on the other hand, experience from explicit string theory models and other physical arguments, uh, uh, there are various indications that the, the coefficient of the gas bonnet term should be uh, positive, okay? Now, um, as far as I know, there is no conclusive argument in favor of this positivity of the gas bonnet term. And in the following, we will see how our EFT string can tell us something about some, can give us some information about the sign of this uh, gas bonnet term. Let me also mention that here, in specifying this cap into the to the gauge sector, uh, here I've omitted some possible indices labeling the different gauge sectors. Okay, so how uh, in order to see how the the the, the string interacts with these uh, uh, sectors, let me focus on these axionic uh, uh, coupling couplings here, which of course are related to the to the axionic ones by supersymmetry and. Uh, they write them in terms of uh, this uh, uh, full form. Uh, and then uh, uh, by integration by part uh, in terms of the corresponding chain simon free form. Now, uh, the key observation is that uh, in presence of a string, this one form here is not really closed, but rather its closure is violated by the presence of the string. Okay. And then uh, a gauge transformation or the local Lorentz transformation does not really leave uh, this bulk action invariant, as you can see, starting from this uh, uh, formulation here, these axonic couplings, uh, but rather the, its variation will provide, will produce generic and non-vanishing term where these two form the descent to form coming from this four form. So this is just a realization of a well-known anomaly flow mechanism of Kalan and Harvey. And as in that case, uh, since we are assuming completeness of the spectrum and then the fact that this EFT string should be there, should be there in a consistent way, so it should not break any bulk local symmetry, this uh, uh, anomaly flow should be perfectly canceled by an anomaly supported by the washed sector, produced by the washed sector supported by the string. And uh, this means that the, the, the washy sector supported by the string should produce an anomaly, which has uh, this uh, fixed form, uh, in particular, a contribution to the gravitation anomaly, a contribution to the normal bundle anomaly, um, and a contribution to the gauge anomaly. And here I'm focusing just on the maximal abelian subgroup since I will eventually be interested only in the rank of the gauge group, so I can focus on the, on the maximal abelian subgroup, which includes then the captain sector plus possible or pure U1s. And instead, uh, I will not consider the non captain uh, contributions. Okay, so, so far, the, this discussion, uh, I mean, is practically uh, morally identical to the line of argument presented in these papers uh, in, uh, in higher dimensions. On the other hand, as I said, uh, now we cannot uh, uh, assume the existence of this uh, superconformal fixed point. And uh, uh, while we are proposing, as I said, that these EFT strings and precisely these EFT strings uh, admit uh, that the Washit sector admits uh, a, a description in terms of a weakly coupled 0, 0,2 nonlinear sigma model. Okay, so more specifically, this nonlinear sigma model uh, will contain a universal uh, two-dimensional 0,2 caral scalar multiplet U, which are just um, 
codify the, 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 the universal degrees of freedom, the center of mass degrees of freedom. Then there is a, a, a certain number of internal scalar multiplets, uh, which uh, describe the fluctuation of the target space of the nonlinear sigma model. Then a certain number of Fermi multiplets, which are typically charged under the bulk gauge symmetries. And then, okay, these uh, first three types of multiplets are, would be the minimal ones, but it turns out by matching with some higher dimensional, uh, I mean, some UV completions, in particular in F theory, it turns out to be uh, necessary to introduce also a fourth type uh, of multiplet, namely another type of Fermi multiplet, which instead uh, is neutral under the, the bulk edge symmetries while uh, transformed non trivially under this uh, uh, normal bundle of the string in four dimensions. And their role is to introduce possible uh, higher order obstructions for this uh, uh, chiral matter, which uh, could be massless, which are massless, but uh, may be obstructed by higher order terms uh, in, the, in the effective uh, potential. So, so, so that, uh, yes. Just to, see, just to see if I understand. So the picture yeah, sure. here is that you don't trust the deep IR picture because the modes on the string can mix heavily with everything in the bulk and you don't know. So instead you try to describe it in the UV and in the UV you say that it's a nonlinear sigma model, which is not a CFT, right? You would float yeah. to a CFT if this was an ordinary, like higher dimension string, but you are being agnostic here. You're saying, I'm just going to couple the UV theory to, to this thing and this is our answer. It's a nonlinear sigma model and it's an answer that, that works. Is that precisely? Okay, thanks. Well, let's say at, at weak coupling, uh, at zero volume weak lap, coupling would be uh, would be three fields, uh, and so it's in a certain sense uh, it's a, it's a super conformal field theory. But uh, in general, they have a non-vanishing uh, metric on the on the target space. So in, in principle, strictly speaking, is is not uh, a super conformal field theory. On the other hand, in order to compute anomalies, that's sufficient. No. You see, yes. and uh, uh, let me say that uh, taking account the conti these contributions, uh, the the their role is simply to remove uh, some possible uh, chiral fields from uh, the, the the really uh, flat direction loading target space, so that uh, the the net number of unobstructed target space directions uh, is provided by these uh, uh, by this difference, uh, okay, between the number of these chiral multiplets and the number of these uh, Fermi multiplets. And indeed, if you compute the worksheet uh, anomaly corresponding to this spectrum, only this uh, net number of color multiplets appear, and you have different contributions to the different anomalies. Uh, and uh, all the contributions are uh, just standard one loop toft anomalies, uh, apart from this uh, contribution here, which actually is a subtle contribution, and we initially overlooked it. While it becomes, while it, it is actually crucial to match some UV completions, which uh, uh, can appear whenever the target space uh, has some possible isometries, uh, which could be gauged uh, under the the bulk gauge uh, uh, symmetries, uh, and then can can support a nonlinear realization of these uh, uh, bulk gauge symmetries. So, being nonlinear realized, uh, they uh, this gauging can. Uh, um, induce some breaking of the gauge symmetry at the classical level, like, like through a, a, a kind of green schwartz mechanism, okay? Or, or through some kind of vestomino, vestomino term. And, uh, and uh, indeed, uh, such uh, uh, the presence of this possible uh, classical violation of the, of the gauge symmetry uh, supporting of the worksheet of, of these strings uh, of similar, I mean, on 0, 0,2 nonlinear sigma model was discussed a year ago, I mean, in fully supersymmetric way in these papers. And then we should match uh, this anomaly with what predicted uh, from the anomaly in flow. And uh, uh, again, uh, because of the completeness, uh, uh, the, the total sum should be, should be zero, it should be perfect matching. And this way one can get some non-trivial uh, bound on the bulk sector. So let me just uh, uh, rewrite here the relevant bulk terms. So uh, in particular here, I just focus on, again on the, on the abelian, the maximal abelian subgroup. So these are all U1s. And now here I introduce some indices corresponding to these U1s. Of course, here I'm showing just the saxonic terms, while the saxonic ones are related to them by supersymmetry. And then by matching, basically, let me show 
this term here with this term here, you get this result, namely this constant appearing in the gauss bonnet term paired with any set of EFT string charges should be a non-negative multiple of three. And uh, uh, if you, okay, first of all, let me say that uh, this quantization condition is much stronger than the quantization condition that we will get uh, from the axionic, corresponding axionic coupling or the contrary in turn to the axionic coupling uh, by requiring, for instance, that the, 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 the space time uh, is spin. And second, it's positivity. Uh, if you remember that the EFT strings generate this axionic con we are focusing on, then implies that this combination which appear here in the gauss bonnet term is actually positive. So uh, providing an independent argument for the positivity, at least of these saxionic couplings to the gauss bonnet term. Second, by, uh, we get a, 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 a bound on the rank of the gauge group, which can interact uh, with this EFT string. This uh, symbol here denotes the rank of the gauge group, which can interact with the EFT string of charges E. And uh, uh, by, by this, I mean uh, uh, the, 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 the rank of the gauge groups, the total rank of the gauge group, uh, which couples to the saxions and axions, which are back reacted by a given uh, string. Okay. This, uh, uh, this rank is provided by the rank of this matrix here with indices A, B. And this is precisely the, the, the matrix appearing here, which is a positive definite matrix. And then the, this rank should be bounded by the highest possible rank of this contribution here. And then we can focus just on these two contributions, which are the only ones uh, which can provide a positive uh, definite uh, uh, matrix. And then uh, the, the highest possible rank of this first contribution is just the number of Fermi multiplets, while uh, by using the explicit form of this additional contribution that it was too complicated to write down here, one can see that uh, uh, this matrix here has a, a maximal possible value, the number of uh, two times the number of these uh, uh, effective kind of multiplet. And uh, by using, again, the matching, the previous two matching conditions here, this one and this one, you can rewrite these numbers in terms uh, of this constancy tilde and eventually write down this maximal possible value in this way. So you see that the rank of these uh, uh, gauge groups are set basically, uh, so they are bounded by, uh, I mean, that this maximal value is uh, determined by the gauss bonnet terms, which is uh, a somehow uh, surprising result from, uh, from, uh, from a purely four-dimensional uh, viewpoint. So is this related to the unitarity? Isn't this, this is similar to the unitarity bound, right? Yeah, I mean, I know that uh, from the, uh, your viewpoint, this comes from the unitarity by, by assuming the, 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 in a sense, the unitarity here is simply the, the, the counting of uh, the different contributions to the anomaly. And, um, and is this related really to the unitarity formula I'm asking? I mean, I don't see the minus two, I guess. I'm saying so something like, or a factor of two. I'm, I'm not sure about your factors of two. I'm just saying it is just like the rank is less than the level or less than or equal to the level, right? Well, here we, we are not uh, speaking in terms of uh, super conformal field theories. No, I know, I know. But the unitarity bound of the, of the would-be weak theory when it flows in the infrared, the unitarity will give you some constraint. I see, but I don't know what is the infrared uh, point. Regardless, I'm asking whether that band would be agreeing with this or not. That's my question. I'm not saying whether that's a proof or not. Ah, no. I see. So assuming that it flows to some yeah, uh, infrared, yeah. yes, I think so. I say, uh, I... Although, 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 uh, I mean, for instance, uh, I'm not sure about, uh, uh, I mean, regarding this Fermi, the contribution of the Fermi multiplets, I would say, yes, uh, this contribution is a bit more subtle. And actually, this comes from the right-handed sector, from the chiral multiplets, uh, which contains some 
in principle, uh, some, some uh, right-hand fermions, while uh, they really contribute because uh, of this non-linearization. So I'm not sure that you can really uh, uh, precisely uh, get these bounds. Uh, I don't know if Timo remembers uh, precisely if you just uh, uh, adopt your, uh, your approach and, and um, you assume the existence of a superconformal field theory. I think that this is I think it'd be very difference. surprising if it's not. And if it is not, then I'd be interested to know what's the difference <clears throat> between them. <clears throat> it'd be surprising because that would be that there's an extra condition. I would say that this is, uh, maybe this is the main difference uh, because if I remember well, it was crucial for you that only, you got only contribution for the left uh, moving sector, right? Uh, well, you, let's see. So you can have, for example, C left. Are you, let's, say, let's see your gauge group is on the C left. Then, then you're basically saying that the C left is carries at least the gauge group. Now there could be that C left has extra degrees of freedom forced on other things like, I don't know, center of mass or whatever. And that could give you extra conditions. I'm not no. sure that's what you're saying, but- uh, no, In addition to the center of mass degrees of freedom and to this uh, C left, this is obvious uh, left moving sector, which are the Fermi multiplets. I'm saying that uh, there is a sub this subtle possible contribution which comes from non realizations and it should be there because we- That it, comes from where? This knowledge comes from where in the language of, uh, where, where, how do you see that on the string? What is that? Uh, I, I'm going to show an example uh, later on. Okay, okay, let's okay. See. I don't know if it will be clarifying, but uh, let's hope so. Okay, so- uh, Sorry, Luca, could I, before yes. we ask another question? Yes, sure. So, the, um, so, the, the there's there's this fact that anomalies for continuous symmetries can always be matched by free fields and if you have supersymmetry by free superfields always okay. right so what i'm asking is how much of this is i mean what i'm asking is the the, the you, you propose that you have essentially a free theory in practice right in the uv more speaking yes and 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 that allows you to match anomalies uh is there any other independent evidence that the theory in the UV is this free theory you're proposing? No, well, we we got uh, uh, this, uh, I mean, this was suggested by the explicit models. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, so yes, in the yeah. sense that, uh, you know, again, uh, this back reaction, uh, I mean, uh, yes, I don't have, uh, I mean, I didn't include any discussion on this specific point, but uh, uh, the back reaction typically, say, uh, forces the internal space to expand. And then uh, by expansion, also the brains corresponding to, to the EFT strings somehow are better described at a classical level, in particular the smooth modular space, which uh, can then lead to a, a, a geometrization of this uh, uh, target nonlinear uh, single model target uh, space. I see, I see. Okay. What I'm asking is, if someone were to tell you that they found us, uh, an EFT string for which the UV theory, not the IR, the UV theory you're considering is interacting or is not a sigma model or anything, I think your constraints would still work because you would still say, oh, well, the anomaly is equivalent. It's anomaly equivalent to a bunch of free fields and then apply your analysis. I just wanted to see if you agree with that or not. Well, also our strings are interacting, but are weakly interacting. I don't, I mean, okay, if, but, if, if at the beginning you, you don't know if there is a regime in which you can uh, even define your, 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 your fields, uh, your weakly interacting fields, uh, uh, where do you start from to you know to compute the anomaly? I don't, I don't know. I, I mean, if just... you have a superconformal field theory, you can invoke these general results on the central chart, uh, unitarity. I, I'm, I'm just saying. Argument. I'm just saying that whatever it is, like for the anomaly argument, you don't need it to be free or weakly coupled. I think, I'm, I'm because everything is anomaly equivalent to free fields. I think, but uh, but that's what I wanted to ask. But uh, but we can also discuss later if you prefer. Mm. Okay. Okay. So. Um, Okay, so these are uh, basically our main results. Uh, and uh, these are uh, the, 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 let's say, the more conservative bounds that one can get uh, at least uh, under our working assumptions. But let me say that if you have any idea on the UV completion of these EFT strings, you can, uh, and, and as it happens in, in some concrete models, uh, then you can have uh, a better idea of which uh, or this uh, multiplet uh, supported by the, the, the EFT strings can actually contribute to the to the anomaly, and uh, and uh, get uh, some stricter 
some possible stricter after bounds on this uh, rank. And this can be useful to use this bound to get some information, say, on the compactification space of that specific uh, UV complete uh, model. As I'm going, so I, I will discuss uh, uh, how this uh, idea is realized in a theory compactification in a moment. But before doing that, let me just uh, uh, very briefly discuss the simplest possible application of these uh, uh, bounds, namely, uh, a model with just one saxon and a corresponding one axon, uh, in which one gauge set then couples to this saxon to a constant c, and the, the, the gauss bonnet sector couples to this saxon to the constant c tilde. And in this case, the saxon is con just the negative uh, real numbers, uh, its discretization. So the corresponding ST string charges uh, are uh, just the negative integers. And then the first constraint is just telling us that uh, uh, this uh, uh, constancy tilde should be uh, three times uh, in a negative integer. And the second constraint is telling us that the rank of the gauge group should be bounded by 6k minus 2. So once you fix the gauss bonnet term, you cannot take whatever uh, gauge group you want. Uh, and uh, in particular, you have an upper bound on the rank of this type. Uh, and vice versa, if you if you fix the rank of the of the gauge group, uh, then uh, I mean this C tilde should be uh, big enough. It, it cannot be vanishing, for instance. Uh, then let me instead. Uh, oh, yeah. K was what in that case? Can you remind me your K? Sorry, K. I just introduced. The, I just solved this condition here. Yeah, you okay. know, but that's a, is that a level of some current algebra? No, 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 no. It's just uh, a way to solve. Uh, so the, the constraint was that uh, uh, this combination, now there are no indices in that specific case, and E is quantized. So you can take E equal to one, and then you get the condition that uh, C tilde should be a non-negative multiple of three. And I just wrote uh, this non-negative multiple of three as three times K, Okay, any any where k is any integer. Okay, no negative yeah, integer. So the level of the current algebra here for you is fixed or not in terms of k? Ah. Uh, yes, for example, three. Yes, k yes, one. that would be ah yes, that would mm, now is not. Uh, I use the same symbol, but yes, it could be the same in uh, in. Uh, if you want to interpret in terms of, of a super conformal field theory, yes, would be related. What would it be to exactly? That's what I'm asking. What is exactly the level of that you want current? Or the of the current algebra, whatever. The ah, G. precisely. And I don't know. I mean, here I, I actually is omitted this, all powers to of to pi. It should be related to this k. Now I don't. Uh, is this six k minus two? Uh, no, now I don't know the, the precise relation. Sorry. I don't know the precise relation now between this k and the k of the of the the the, the level. Okay. That should so be related. Exactly. I mean, they, they appear precisely in the same way. So if, if it was 6K minus two, then it would answer my question. If it's not, then I'll be surprised. <clears throat> 6K, which K? My K or the, the level? Your K, your K. You say rank is less than or equal to 6K minus two. I would have said rank is less than or equal to level. Ah, okay, okay, I see. All right, could be. Now we didn't we didn't um, go uh, didn't go in parallel. I mean, uh, matching all our uh, formulas with the possible uh, formula that you will get by applying the, the superconformal uh, by assuming superconformal theory. Okay. So I I don't know at the moment. I think it'd be interesting to check it. Okay. Good. Thank you. Uh, so let me pass to the discussion of the uh, possible UV test. In particular, we'll focus on a large class of models coming from a theory compactification to, to four dimensions. In particular, we'll focus on the, on the asymptotic region corresponding to a large volume of the, of the type 2B compactification space, or so the base of the elliptic vibration. And uh, this regime is associated to, uh, so the corresponding uh, set of uh, 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 EFT uh, string charges can be identified uh, with a so-called cone of movable curves, which are basically curves of this uh, uh, compactification space, which have uh, uh, no negative intersection with any effective divisor, 
And as the, the name suggests, they can uh, freely move around in the internal space. So uh, physically, the corresponding strings uh, are obtained by wrapping different brains on this uh, curve. And then uh, if you uh, apply our first constraint, then, uh, uh, I mean, one can uh, perform a dimensional reduction and carefully compute uh, the, the explicit value of this C tilde in terms of internal geometry. It turns out that this combination here, which is the one, let me remind you, the one appearing here, and also actually here, can be admit this nice geometrical interpretation. I mean, six times the intersection between uh, our movable curve, right by the by the D3 brain giving rise to the string, and the anti-canonical divisor. And the anti-canonical divisors for the for this FQD compactification should be effective. And then uh, indeed uh, this intersection is non-negative. And then, of course, this combination is uh, uh, actually a non-negative multiple of six, which is, of course, a non-negative multiple of three. So we can explicitly check the first uh, constraint. Regarding the second constraint, this is precisely a, 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 a subclass, uh, I mean, this subclass of model, which is, uh, um, we can say something more about the spectrum of uh, uh, of uh, multiplex supported by uh, these EFT strings, uh, basically borrowing uh, the results obtained in this uh, nice paper uh, some years ago. And uh, uh, so you can see that in addition to the universal multiplet, the center of mass mode and the, 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 the charge Fermi multiplets, which correspond to three, seven, uh, say, open strings uh, connecting the three brains and the bulk seven brains, uh, there are basically two types uh, of chiral multiplets and correspondingly to types of possible uh, sources of higher order abstractions. Uh, the first type corresponds to deformations uh, or the embedding of the curve, uh, geometrical deformation of the curve uh, uh, wrapped by the different brain, while the second type corresponds to fluctuations uh, of uh, the self dual to form uh, supported by the corresponding infra brain in the dual and theory picture. Or if you wish, some uh, SL to Z uh, twisted uh, um, Wilson lines supported by by the different brain. And now, uh, if the internal space is smooth and of course supersymmetry is minimal, as we are assuming, then we expect no isometries to be present in the internal space, and then no possible isometries characterizing these uh, uh, target space directions, the ones described by this first type of chiral multiplet. And that means that only this second type of chiral multiplet can uh, really be gauged and then uh, provide a linearization of the bulk gauge symmetries and then contribute to the uh, to this Green-Schwartz uh, uh, anomaly contribution to the, to the anomaly polynomial. And this uh, uh, implies that we can write down, in this case, uh, a stricter bound uh, for the rank of the gauge group. Now, this uh, rank of the gauge group detected by uh, an EFT string of charges, E corresponds uh, geometrica, geometrically to the rank of the gauge group supported uh, on the divisors, which have an unvanishing intersection with, uh, with this movable curve. And this rank should be bounded by this nice geometrical uh, expression formula. This is the, our strict bound, which only takes into account these uh, uh, two contributions. And here also write down uh, the, the um, instead the conservative bound, which uh, for instance could uh, apply in cases in which uh, the internal space is singular, like in toroidal or different cases, and there could be some kind of uh, enhanced uh, uh, symmetry supported, I mean, appearing on the target space of the string. Oops, sorry. Now, uh, these bounds, uh, I mean, we checked uh, these bounds explicitly in several examples by engineering, uh, in the, trying to engineer in different ways uh, the gauge sector by tuning the Weierstrass model. Uh, and we could check, uh, I mean, comparing this bound with the Cordelius bounds that indeed they're always uh, satisfied. Uh, vice versa, these bounds seem to provide some non-trivial information on the internal uh, elliptically fiber Carabiao uh, when uh, the gauge group uh, corresponds to, to, to U1, uh, purely U1 sectors, 
since they provide the bounds on the rank of the corresponding model by group, which is less understood, much less understood from the geometrical viewpoint. So this is an example in which these EFT arguments can provide some non-trivial information on the internal space. So uh, let me give, uh, oh, actually this was a, okay, because I omitted an exa example one. Okay, this is one example, uh, explicit example on um, which uh, I can write down some explicit numbers. Let me consider the internal space uh, to be a, a, a P1 fibration over P2, where the twisting of this fibration is determined by the negative integer N. And uh, in this case, uh, the, the, this corner of movable curves uh, and then the set of EFT string charges is generated by these two movable curves. So the P1 fiber and the P1 in the base, uh, which can move in the base. And uh, the first one uh, can detect uh, uh, gauge groups, uh, which can have at most, uh, according to our bounds, uh, can have at most uh, uh, rank 18. While the second uh, curve and the, the second EFT string can uh, detect gauge groups, which can have at most rank 28 plus 10 times 7. And for instance, uh, by taking the simplest case of uh, uh, trivial vibration, so n equal to zero, equal to zero, we can see that, uh, for instance, the first uh, uh, bound can actually be saturated by appropriately tuning the Weierstrass model, for instance, by getting, uh, you know, to get uh, this gauge sector, while uh, for this uh, second uh, bound, uh, we could uh, uh, construct uh, as maximal possible rank, uh, a gauge group of rank 26. So in this second case, uh, we could not uh, saturate uh, this uh, upper bound. Uh, let me also write down the values of the uh, more conservative bounds in order to compare them uh, with uh, what we get from the dual heterotic uh, description since uh, this uh, theory um, background uh, admits a dual heterotic model. Indeed, in general, I mean, one can analogously discuss uh, uh, heterotic models, uh, particularly here I focus on uh, uh, models in which the corresponding uh, EFT strings uh, uh, are given by standard fundamental strings um, and uh, NS5 brains uh, wrapping uh, NEF internal NEF devices. Now, in this picture, I showed uh, the M theory uplift of these uh, uh, configurations. In particular, this fundamental string will correspond to an M2 brain stretching between the two uh, boundary walls, that are written walls. While the, the NS5 will uplift to M5 brains uh, wrapping an internal NEF divisor and sitting at a point uh, of this interval. And now, because of the back reaction, uh, I mean, taking carefully in account the, 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 the non triviality of the bundle supported by the, by the walls and the, the back reaction of the internal space, uh, which in particular induces a non trivial G4 flux. Uh, it turns out that these are not really isolated and uh, brains, but they're uh, generically connected to the boundary uh, walls through some open M2 brains. Now here I'm not writing down uh, the explicit formula, but one can uh, carefully do the dimensional reduction, collecting, releasing some known results in the literature and carefully redefining fields in order to agree with our conventions and get explicit uh, form for these uh, constants appearing in the gauss bonnet term. And uh, one can then check uh, the first uh, um, constraint, that I, our first general constraint, uh, up to some subject that I'm going to discuss in a moment. Uh, while uh, the, the second uh, bound, uh, I mean, for the, for the ranks, uh, give, uh, if you use uh, the first type of EFT string, uh, a, a, a universal uh, bound for this type of a, a F1 string, which does not depend on the model, is always equal to 22. And indeed, you can compare this 22 with the 22 appearing here. And indeed, the diffie brain, uh, the string obtained by Bapin diffie brain on this uh, P1 fiber is dual to the, 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 the heterotic uh, fundamental string. Uh, while uh, the, the NS5 the, the strings coming, the FT string coming from these NS5 brains, uh, I mean, uh, provide bounds which are more model dependent. Uh, and if you pick uh, the, the heterotic model 
uh, if you, for instance, pick the exotic model, which is dual to the FQD model that I discussed before, for instance, you can check that uh, uh, you get uh, this uh, uh, bound, which is in, which indeed agrees uh, with a conservative bound to pay, pay here from the FQD side. Of course, one can uh, play with these bounds, apply to apply them to other models, uh, and uh, uh, I mean, uh, According to what we could find, I mean, they always uh, uh, they can always be checked to be satisfied. Now, regarding the first point, and these are my last two slides. Uh, let me say, uh, I mean, before concluding, that uh, uh, so far I've been cheating a little bit because uh, I omitted, uh, or better, I assumed to be vanishing. And a possible additional term to the which can be supported to on these strings, and uh, which is similar to a, a, a term which can be supported on uh, which is supported on uh, type two A and S five brains, uh, and which can contribute to the normal bundle anomaly. So we interpret this possible term. Uh, as capturing some uh, hidden preferred five-dimensional structure. Indeed, uh, this uh, contribution to the washit uh, uh, to the to the theory can be obtained along the lines uh, in, in, in describing this uh, paper by Becker and Becker by dimension reducing this five-dimensional Simon term in presence of strings. Oops. And uh, um, you can understand the fact that uh, this term is associated with a, with a um, hidden five-dimensional structure in the explicit uh, realization, um, which uh, uh, comes uh, actually from the heterotic model that I already discussed, that I just discussed, in the case in which uh, the, the EFT strings, a string correspond to NS5 and NS5 brain wrapping an F divisor, which has a non-vanishing triple self intersection. So precisely in this way, the back reaction of the EFT string forces the, the internal uh, or other Witten interval to decompactify much faster compared to the, to the internal, to the volume of the internal KBI. So automatically, dynamically creating a hierarchy between this preferred fifth direction and the rest of the compactification. So precisely for these uh, kind of configurations, and we, we could find similar uh, similar effect also for, uh, for uh, some EFT strings in type 2A, uh, we, we can expect, uh, uh, we should take into account the possible contribution of such a, such a term. And taking into account uh, this possible contribution, then uh, actually uh, we get a modification of our bounds, uh, which depends uh, uh, in a cubic way on the charges, uh, which indeed are needed to match uh, the uh, these uh, EFT results uh, with the uh, UV completion for what you can get from the UV completion. So let me conclude. Um, so I hope that I convinced you that the F these EFT strings uh, provide some natural physical probes uh, of uh, uh, these asymptotic field space regions and of the corresponding uh, perturbative physics. In particular, they provide bounds uh, involving the gauge uh, uh, and the, the curvature square sectors. Uh, so in particular, uh, some positivity bounds involving the gauss bonnet terms uh, and some upper bounds on the uh, ranks of the gauge groups in terms of these gauss bonnet terms. Uh, and uh, uh, at least so far, uh, all these bounds uh, have been uh, microscopically tested. And furthermore, these bounds, uh, uh, I mean, may be used to, to get uh, some non-trivial information on the UV structure or the string theory uh, compactification, like for instance, in this case of a model by group or also in other similar examples. Okay, thank you for uh, your attention. <laughs>